Okay, I want to give you an update. I just got my pump in. This is a uh, 16 gallons per minute at uh, 650 uh, PSI on the first stage. The second stage is rated roughly at uh, 2500 PSI at 3.5 gallons per minute. Um, roughly, I won't know until I bench test this. This is a gear pump. As you can see in there, there are gears in that, which is a means it's a very powerful pump. I want to show you a little update on the Clems engine, how I actually was able to accomplish the high rate of speed. And this is uh, basically how I did it. What I ended up doing is making two jets. These were basically regular pressure washing fittings. I ended up taking them off and re-threading them so I can screw them in. And these are uh, real small jets, not really much at all. Too, too high of a uh, pressure on them. I needed more thrust than uh, just the pressure itself. And uh, basically how I ended up feeding it through is through the pump through here. Uh, this basically slid off. And I have a, I've made a special brass fitting on that so it swivels, easily turns on there uh, to uh, pretty much uh, uh, able to feed the liquid through the center of the pipe. As you can see, that then went to my T assembly and then pretty much went out to my jet. So we use thrust to actually spin the generator. Believe it or not, it's very powerful if you can get enough volume with it uh, and that's why I need to bench test this new pump it was about 109 bucks on eBay uh, pretty cheap compared to most most of these pumps are about 300 bucks for this kind of uh, design yeah I don't know if it's used or whatever but as long as it works that's good enough for me uh, and pretty much I want to do a bench test on this with a uh, uh, a uh, one eighth of a nozzle or a, a 0.125 uh, jet on this and see what kind of thrust I can get with the pressure because that would be very critical if I can get this 600 PSI at uh, 9 point I think was it 9.68 gallons per minute that would give me a huge amount of thrust on this so I need to definitely bench test that uh, probably hook it up to one of these uh, motors so DC motor this is a 19 horsepower this is actually for electric cars yeah I did build one it's just waste of time and money because the batteries uh, too many batteries for electric car but we can still use this for test bed and everything else so that's pretty much where I'm at like I said I got set up a jig on this what I'm going to end up doing is trying to get the pressure reading and also test the thrust that's the amount of force that it actually exerts and hopefully if I get everything set up I can verify this pump and then what I want to do with this pump is I've actually uh, I'm going to modify this in such a way that this is going to be the rotor. In other words, and the reason I want to tell you this, because this Clems engine really got me going with all the data, this is actually going to be mounted to a base, and the rotor is actually going to be this pump. So when that rotor jets actually rotate, it's going to rotate the pump alone. All I need is another shaft to start it up. Now the Clems engine, if you ever read anything about the Richard Clems engine, read up on it. Very little information, which really makes it more interesting. Why is there very little information? And not only that, the amount of power he was able to get. And once you, if you look at my prior video on my XL data, I played around with some numbers and I've been very conservative with the numbers and it does show mathematically over unity. Now the key is, is to be able to get this, design the uh, rotor around this pump, have the jets then be able to turn this, basically this is going to be about 24 inches in diameter, so that pressure will be able to turn this on its own and also be able to pressurize that nozzle at the same time the centripetal force alone will add the uh, kinetic energy to force the liquid out basically helping the pump and then there's another phase that goes on and that's the thermo because when you're dealing with higher pressure the temperature is going to rise and now that cooking oil becomes more 
viscosity becomes even lighter so it smooths out even more so technically it should be over unit now the key is is to bench test everything before it's built and like I said this is actually going to be the rotor when I'm finished this is going to be attached to the base I'm going to have another shaft out and this whole base is going to rotate this right here is my pickup I'm going to actually have oil actually fall right into a special cup that actually feeds right into this at the same time the shaft would be sticking out like this so when it rotates it's going to rotate on its own all it needs is the primary starting which by the way the Clems engine did have a starter to start it and once it got started it actually propelled itself through the thrust and like I said there's a lot of energy that this can generate if it's done right so that's technically where I'm at on this Clems project this one right here is basically uh, used a power steering pump I need to upgrade uh, it had a little bit of leak, so by building the Clems engine this time as a pump itself, I won't have any problems with leaks or anything of that nature. So this is an update on my uh, new uh, Clems engine project, and I hope you enjoy this video. Talk to you later.